Good afternoon, it's that bloke on a motorbike. I'm out on the Royal Enfield Classic 350 today uh, and I'm going to be doing a review. I've had the bike quite a while now, I bought it in the end of July, uh, end of June, beginning of July, and now I've got just short of 6,000 miles on the clock. I resisted doing the review until now because I wanted to get to know the bike and I don't think you can just get to know a bike in a week or two. You get a first impression, but that's about it. Now this is not the first Royal Enfield 350 that I've owned. I also own uh, an Indian one which was made for the Indian market. A fellow working in India bought it, rode it round and then imported it back into the country. Somebody else then bought that bike and had a sidecar fitted to use as his wedding transport. Uh, and then through circumstance they didn't have anywhere to keep it so up it went for sale with that one uh, it's 350cc's it's it must have all of about nine horsepower um, and it's got a sidecar on but it performs adequately so when I saw that the new 350's these reborns were coming out I was very interested the styling of the bike is definitely retro and it's powered by a 350cc Royal Enfield J series engine it produces 20 brake horsepower which on paper doesn't seem a lot but in real world terms it's pretty okay uh, the top speed they'd say quoted at around about 70 miles an hour um, this would cruise all day long at 60 I tend to use the back roads most of the time so it's normally cruising around about 40-50 miles an hour which I find is just absolutely spot on with not having a fairing you've got all the wind blast into your face and when you start getting up at sort of legal national limit 60 70 miles an hour you've got a considerable wind blast and on a day like this a lot of wind chill okay so there we have the royal enfields classic 350 reborn it's in the uh, alcyon black uh, and i bought it back in June, July last year. So, quick look round the bike then. Let's start at the front end. So, controls on this side. What we've got is you've got the engine switch here. So, in that position, the engine is killed. That's your run position. And then over there is your starter motor. Underneath that, we've got uh, hazard flashes. That's off. And that will be on. On the left hand bar we've got the switch here for the headlights so you can see we've got push it to that side we've got the pass or flash position there we've got dip beam and here we've got main beam. Um, headlights come on automatically like all bikes do nowadays. Underneath indicators so left right and push to cancel. Horn button is down tucked underneath there. In front we've got a little button with the eye on it, that's the info button which operates different functions on the trip meter. Now you'll see on mine I've got this little thing here which is the uh, GoPro remote control just so I can tell whether or not I'm recording. Um, there's a USB socket underneath which I use for powering the GoPro when I'm actually riding the bike. A little binnacle in front here we've got the ignition key and the steering lock then you've got the speedometer with miles per hour on the outside kph on the inside i have found that there's a little bit of condensation starting to come into that but it's not too too much of a problem uh, at the right hand side you can put the tripper if you can get hold of one and then we turn it on we get the normal sweep all your warning lights are there and then down here you've got your little instrument cluster your information board so fuel gauge at the top and then we've got the time now if i press the mode button the info button that changes to miles that i've done all together and you've got trip one and you've got trip two now when you're running low on fuel there's no reserve tap on it but when you're getting down on your fuel you get fuel warning light comes on up here 
and then you get a separate trip comes up and it tells you how many miles you've drawn since you last did your um, you've, you, you went on to reserve now I've run it up to 75 miles on reserve and when I filled it up there was still plenty left so I reckon you could probably get around about 80 to 100 miles out of it and just turn that off okay so we said that brakes wise front brake here is hydraulically operated uh, pull the lever non adjustable levers if we look at the front brake just move that around so the front brake there is a single disc uh, with a twin piston caliper I do believe that that is a subsidiary of Brembo you see the ABS ring running around as well on the back what we've got is your normal foot operation there which again is hydraulic and comes up to a single disc brake at the back so we've got a single disc just in there uh, and uh, again adequate for the power output of the bike suspension wise we've got non adjustable front suspension and the rear suspension we've got preload adjusters uh, now the problem with the preloads on this I don't know if you can see it there but the problem is that the little ring that you put your C spanner on you can't get it in for the mud guard stays um, that is a bit of a bad bit of a bad design if you can see it in there where you put your C spanner you can't get the spanner in because of the, uh, the little mud guard problem uh, I've fitted mine with Lumo panniers which I will be doing a separate review and they've got the uh, Royal Enfield racks on as well um, it's chain drive uh, a lot of people have complained that the chain wears out too quickly well that's nearly 6,000 miles on it I've adjusted it four times if you keep it clean you keep it lubricated then it'll last forever engine wise 350 cc's um, the J series engine puts out 20 brake horsepower single cylinder engine um, looks very retro power output is more than adequate paintwork and colour scheme love it a bit I was going to go for the originally for the chrome um, red and chrome but I'm really glad I bought this one now little foible I've put on this picnic basket on the back uh, I wanted something to put me bits and pieces in when I'm going for a ride had that in the sh workshop um, not doing anything so just cable tied it onto a rocket back this bike gets used every day uh, so you can see it does need a bit of a wash but it just come up very nice inside this cover here we've got the toolbox tool kit and the um, uh, battery and the electrics in there so there we have it that's the classic 350 um, beautiful bike good economy eight, uh, 8p per mile so let's uh, get my gloves back on because my hands are freezing at the moment get my gloves back on and we'll go for a bit of a ride and see what it's like on the road so what's it like out on the road I use the bike just about every day I use it both for commuting to work and out on pleasure rides if you've seen any of the uh, other videos where I've been on tours in the Lake District uh, you'll know how capable I think the bike is so economy that's the first thing that I think about really uh, being from Yorkshire uh, with the economy it is very good I don't know what the actual miles per gallon is I never bother with that but the actual cost per mile is more important and at the moment this is running at 8p consistently 8 pence per mile 
which I think is pretty good uh, and that includes as we're doing now cruising at like 50 miles an hour or trickling through heavy traffic commuting into work on a morning the bike's nice and narrow so I can get through gaps um, it's got a good neutral riding position I'm very sat up here uh, bars are just lovely and comfortable for me to get to feet are slightly forward and there's just a slightly over 90 degree bend in my knees so comfort wise it is very good I've got the standard seat on uh, and it's good for me to ride consistently or continuously I should say for around about two two and a half hours uh, and then I feel like I need a break but two and a half hours sat in the same position even on my BM, 800, uh, BM 1150RT uh, still get the same thing about two hours you're wanting a stop and a stretch and a coffee actual road holding is very good this has got the standard tyres on the SEA or see it or however you pronounce it uh, a lot of people have said all oh, the tyres are rubbish I found them very good I've driven it in extremely wet conditions uh, and I've also driven it in just damp roads and dry roads uh, and not had any issues whatsoever it's very predictable tyres have never let go once they always give a lot of feedback so with the switch gear as well as it looking good and being nicely designed uh, with a little bit of a, a retro feel to it and a retro look to it it's also incredibly easy to get to it's been well thought out the whole geometry of the bike but particularly what you're looking at up at the front end that single little binnacle with the speedometer in it that's just classic Royal Enfield is that there isn't a ref counter but again why would you need one listen to the engine the engine tells you what it's doing you know all the other bikes that I've had probably what since I was in my late teens have all had ref counters on how many times do I use a ref counter to tell me when to change gear don't I listen to what the engine's saying if you listen to the engine the engine is more than capable of telling you what's going on the engine's a 350cc 20 brake horsepower uh, fuel injected engine it's got the electric start there's no kick start which I really wish there was but there isn't um, it's got a 5 speed gearbox uh, the gears are very well spaced out um, clutch is nice and light one issue that I have found with this and it must just be this one bike because everybody else I've spoken to say they don't have an issue when you're setting off from first gear you set off and if you're in traffic you're trying to pull away a little bit quickly it tends to bog into a false neutral or it goes into neutral it won't let you go into second if you set off slowly and you take a, an early second gear change there isn't any issues with that so I think that's just a, either a foible of my bike or a foible of me wanting to set off just a little bit too quick so braking wise uh, it's equipped with single disc brakes front and rear dual circuit ABS both brakes are hydraulically operated they're not going to win any prizes for massive stopping power but they are very predictable if you're stopping quickly you need a fair old pull on the front brake uh, especially if you were two up I would imagine that that's going to increase your braking distances quite a lot I've never got the ABS to kick in but that's probably down to my braking style rather than uh, or riding style rather than anything else one of the big things that attracted me to the bike was the exhaust note I just love that sound that comes from the exhaust and the air intake 
And if you're going down a, a long steep hill and you've got the throttle shut to use a bit of engine braking, you get the pop, pop, pop on the back of the exhaust, which never fails to bring a grin. In fact, the whole bike, when I'm riding it, always brings a grin to my face. Even when it's cold, it's still a pleasure just to get out and ride it. With it being light uh, and nimble, it has its advantages as well. When I'm sat on it, I can get both feet flat to the floor. And I'll take this bike where I wouldn't take the, uh, the BMW. With this bike, I'm confident that I'll be able to get my feet to the floor. If anything was going wrong, I can stop it and it's light enough to hold it. Whereas if I'm you know, if I'm out on the uh, the BMW, it is so heavy that if things start to go wrong, then you could be in trouble very quickly trying to get your foot down. You're not going to hold the BMW up. Where with this one, yeah, you're going to be able to hold it. I think this is definitely a keeper. Um, <laughs> I don't think I'll be getting rid of it anytime soon. Uh, I'll be very interested to see what the uh, the new classic 650 is when that comes out but I do like the single cylinder engine it is a bike you've got to ride there's no what we class now as aids to your riding there's no such thing as mode controls, traction controls or anything like that but that's just less things to go wrong um, and why do you need mode controls, why do you need traction controls why do you need the switch to be able to switch it to say that it's, you know, roads are wet or roads are dry use your eyes and use your skills, it's taking the skills away from the rider just having all, all those so called aids to ride in So would I keep it? Yes I will. Do I like it? Yes I do. Do I regret buying it? Definitely not. Um, I think for the price of uh, just over £4,000 it's an absolute billy bargain. So thanks for watching, hope you've enjoyed it. Um, if you have Think about subscribing if you're already subscribed thanks very much it means a lot appreciate it and uh, hit the bell share it like it you know what to do with it and i will uh, see you out on the road so ride safe I'll see you on the road